This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. After Maryland's 38-33 victory at Indiana, Maryland is now 5-2. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. There's good news. There's bad news. And then there's the refs. Mason, after... For the podcast, usually you have a book of things to talk about. What's the top of your list for the book? Well, it's going to be a long list uh, this week. It has to be the quarterback situation for the Terps. Salia goes down with what looks like a pretty pretty bad injury. Loxley just said uh, when he addressed the media, they'll get an MRI tomorrow. He did celebrate uh, the win with the team in the locker room. If it's Billy Edwards going forward, uh, it's got to be what this offense is going to look like going on. A lot of running tonight, almost a triple option look from the Terps. But it, it gets the job done in the end. He comes in, they're losing, and uh, he finishes the game off with, I guess, what if he was a baseball pitcher, what would count as his first career win. Hey, that offense, that offense looked tough with Billy Edwards in there. They looked like they had a purpose. The running game worked. Yeah, looked a little triple option-ish. But, man, I love the attitude. They came out and they won the game. That offense won the game. Defense gets one more turnover when they need it in the fourth quarter. And then as uh, some of you who might have followed uh, a Washington football team before would know it as they ran the Rigo drill and went down and scored again. That was really a powerful statement after your star gets hurt. Defensively, they had some good plays. They also had a ton of penalties. I think the refs might have won the game more than Indiana or Maryland. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer, get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Yeah, and, and it's something that we stayed away from on our shows across our network for the most part is talking about the refs at this point. I'm not exactly sure what is going on, but the, the holding on the punt, I, I didn't see it. I feel like that's, that's just an awful call before the ball is punted. There was no rush coming. I, I don't know. I don't know what that was. And then the one that we were just talking about before we got on air here is the, the play where Ty J Johnson finished off the play, um, and got a 15-yard penalty, and then if you go forward about 20 minutes in, in normal time, about 10 in game time or less, Indiana does the same thing after a Maryland run by the goal line, and there's no flag thrown. So as somebody, I just feel like that that watches the game, that likes the sport, mm -hmm. I feel like that's there's a spirit of the game. And if you want to call it for pushing a guy over after the whistle's blown, that's fine. It just has to be every time. It doesn't matter how many 15-yard sure. penalties you throw. Let's take a look at the Tar Heap still P.I. call. And then you can look at the Demas call early in the game where if that was in the parking lot, it probably was mugging on the field. They don't even call a pass interference. Uh, the low hit on Leah on his knee, nobody brought that up. So, yeah, if you want to sit here and, and still go with the ref thing, I'm surprised Mike Loxley has not gone Earl Weaver on these Big Ten refs. I, I cannot believe that he could keep his cool yeah, through this. At some point, if you're a coach and you know you have as much on the line as, as these guys do with the time they put in, the money they make, the money that it brings to the school, you'd eventually think they would take his headset off, throw it at the ref, throw the play sheet, and, and basically try and start a or a Weaver fist fight with mm -hmm. the guy. It, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. And and in some level, you know, obviously they need a head coach on the field, but there's the protecting my players, protecting the I'm going to call it the integrity of the game, as, as stupid as I usually think that sounds when people say it, but what what is this game? What are we seeing? I mean, it's every week. It's It's, it's been from SMU on. They're calling things. I'm not a young man anymore. They're calling things I've never seen called. And I am, and I've seen hundreds of games that I haven't seen this stuff called. It is absurd. It, it makes no sense, but... There is one thing that I'll say, because I've coached a team that has a lot, a lot of penalty problems myself, is the refs talk to each other. And if you're a team and you're disrespectful to a one referee, it gets around pretty quickly that that team likes to commit penalties and they don't like you. And I think mm -hmm. that's where Maryland's found themselves now three years into this. And it's a shame they play undisciplined football like that. It's also a shame that the league's refs have 
found a way to um, really get him. We'll talk more about the details of the game in the podcast. Of course, this is just a post-game show. But you you do have to look ahead. Uh, You've got Northwestern. Northwestern still not having a great season. The win today, man, and it was tight. There were a couple minutes there when I thought this was not going to go Maryland's way. Still gives you a chance for a pretty good season. I've asked you this before. I'm going to ask you all season with what you see now. Seven or eight wins enough for you? Eight definitely is. Not sure about seven. I think the quarterback situation will judge that uh, going forward, what kind of team Maryland has. But it's it's about taking the next step, winning these games. There are multiple points where I thought they could quit especially after the quarterback injury, the ref things aren't going your way. Um, I think only because of the injury, and that is a big part in the game, that's a great team win for Maryland. The fact they stay in it, they finish the game, they ran the ball, they slammed it, the game home. Not something you usually see for Maryland. And look, they're 4-1, and one, or they were 1-4 at Indiana. The one wins the first game Maryland ever played in the Big Ten. So, you know, they should beat Indiana, but they don't. And um, that's what it takes to make a bowl. Always got to beat Rutgers. You always have to beat Indiana. First time at 5-2 and two since 2016, so it's been a while. Um, I, I don't know what we're going to see next, I but I can tell you, I think no matter who the quarterback is here, even though we haven't really seen him throw the ball, uh, we'll find out a lot more about Billy Edwards in this upcoming week and with Northwestern. But from what I've seen so far, I, I think we're in, in okay hands. Yeah, I would say so. With the guy with as many weapons as Maryland has, Hemby now up to, I think it's the second uh, freshman ranked in total yards from scrimmage this year that's not a non-quarterback. There's a lot of guys they can throw the ball to. There's a lot of guys they can run the ball with. They just have to figure out how to, I still think they really need to figure out how to focus the offense on their best players. And, And this may give them the opportunity to do that. So with that, we will wrap it up here and we will see you on the podcast, which should be out Monday evening. Once again, I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Terps win at Indiana. This is the Big Dog Postgame Show.